For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com, youtube.com, forward slash channels web, has videos of our shows. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Mrs. Amina Mohammed, is worried that despite efforts by individuals and organizations, most societies across the world are still being weakened by persistent and increasing inequality. And this, according to her, continues to hamper economic growth. The UN deputy scribe who delivered a keynote speech at the Whisker 2019 Annual Leadership and Mentoring Conference in Lagos believes that women can rise to this challenge and chart a better course through knowledge and technology. You have deliberate thoughts and you direct your focus on what you want out of life. The annual leadership and mentoring conference of women in successful careers, WISCA, is a final masterclass in the organization's 2019 calendar. It has in attendance women who have made remarkable strides in their careers and those who are making progress both in the private and public sectors. It also brings together mentors and mentees and alumni of WISCA's mentorship programs. The founder of WISCA, Mrs. Amina Oyagbola, explains the relevance of the theme of this year's conference in relation to the organization's objectives. Our way is to inculcate in future and present women and women leaders the methodology, the know-how, the roadmap, and confidence to navigate their way to increasing influence and ultimate success. In expounding on the theme, the keynote speaker, Mrs. Amina Mohammed, who is a Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, laments the global upsurge in gender inequality. We continue to live in a male-dominated world with a male-dominated culture. Global progress on gender equality is still far too slow. This inaction deprives the world of the available assets that women bring to the table. And let me just say here, when they say women bring things to the table, it's not just food. And this has got to change. Let's say that that balance of power has to transform itself. And that change pace, the pace of that change, has got to be accelerated. To further inspire these career women, panelists at a conference speak on how not working alone made all the difference to their enviable achievements. If we come together as women, we can help ourselves. For women in politics, there should be no political party but the women party. The men might accuse us of anti-party you know, behavior, but that is the only way we can fill those gaps. And we've been working closely with UN Women, International Republican Institute, Democratic Institute, to build the capacity of the young women to come into politics. One of the major highlights of the conference is a presentation and recognition of graduates of the class of 2019 mentees, the 10th stream that just went through the Win with Whisker program. Win with Whisker class of 30, please take a bow. Take a bow. Congratulations. Congratulations. They are from private sector, public sector, and they are accomplished career women. Women in Successful Careers Whisker is a non-profit organization that focuses on empowering and developing professional women to contribute to nation building through a 12-month structured mentoring program. Well, the size and rate of GDP growth is often used as a measure of economic progress. This week, Nigeria's Statistics Office, the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, revealed that the Nigerian economy grew by 2.28% in the third quarter of the year. Though the report shows growth is higher than it was a year ago, there are certain concerns that a significantly higher growth rate is required to improve the standard and quality of living for most Nigerians. What does the GDP data of the third quarter of 2019 reveal? And is Nigeria's prosperity clock ticking right? Well, to discuss economic growth with me tonight is Mr. Babaji Diogunso, Channel Television's data consultant. Good Glad to have you on the program tonight. So shall we smile, laugh or cry at the latest economic growth data from the NBS? I mean, what are the insights? 
perhaps it's not your time to laugh, but we should take away the frown from our face. But I'd like to start from a slightly different perspective, Millicent. The philosophy in the Bible, similarly in the Quran, the Bible, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, if I'm right, and in the Quran, the first chapter, verse 5, it talks about seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will follow. Now, what does that have to do with GDP? If these prophets were around, how will they see that today? They'll talk about know your priorities. Now, what do I mean? In, for the GDP in Nigeria, there are 46 economic sectors that the National Bureau of Statistics looks at. But the report, the most report, recent report that we have today shows that only three out of 46 sectors account for half of the size of the Nigerian economy. So if we were to have the, to look at or imagine the anatomy of Nigeria, what does it look like? The head is crop production. From the neck and the body, that is trade. And the arms is um, crude petroleum and natural gas. And that is what the Nigerian economy looks like. Now that we've seen what the Nigerian economy really looks like, let's look at the top three facts about GDP. And the first shows that real GDP growth rate based on that report is 2.28%. The concern is the population is growing significantly higher than that. And so even though we've seen a growth in GDP rates, because GDP is not growing as fast as the population, there are concerns over the standard and quality of life. The second is we've seen good growth rate in the oil sector, approximately 6.5% annual growth rate in the oil sector. However, the concern is the oil sector accounts for only 10% of the size of the economy despite this high growth rate. The most important sector is the non-oil sector. And the non-oil sector is the most important sector because it accounts for 90% of the size of the economy. How is that sector growing? And from that report, it shows that the most important sector, the non-oil sector, is still growing at a slow rate. Currently, we're growing at 1.85% and we need to grow significantly higher than that growth rate because the non-oil sector is really where most of Nigeria's superpower lies. So if we were to ask the, I mean, to analyze this for the ordinary man or woman like me out there, what would you say are the business opportunities based on this report? And that is what Nigerians really are concerned about. A lot of Nigerians don't know what all the GDP and gross domestic product rate is about. But let's simplify it by looking at the top seven fastest growing sectors based on the report. And the fastest growing sectors points to where you and I can make money, where the opportunities are for SMEs and also large size businesses. And if we look at that, the fastest growing sector is coal mining. In other words, there's a lot of growth around that electricity value chain. We also see a lot of growth in road transport. We see a lot of growth in air transportation. And there's still significantly double digit growth rates in the telecommunication and information services. So we see those top four sectors that, are, that we're seeing double digit growth rates. Other sectors where Nigerians can make money, the cement, fact, the cement sector. And then we also see crude petroleum and natural gas. And there's still some money and there's still some growth in rail, transportation, and pipelines. So if Nigerians look at these seven sectors that have strong growth rates, the question is to, the right question is, what sort of value can you create as a businessman to these sectors in, their, in a country that are really growing fast. So most economists agree that Nigeria needs like a double digit economic growth rate to uh, strate strategically reduce poverty. And looking at some of these sectors, I mean, what are they, especially the best sectors to achieve this you know, rate to reduce poverty as quickly as possible? And if we were to look at that, that's the future. And what I see is, I see a good future for those involved in crop production. I see a good future for those involved in entertainment, Nollywood, fashion, textile, and clearly there's a lot of opportunities for male and female footwear. So that is for me where the double digit growth rate lies. That is, those are the sectors that a lot of small sized entrepreneurs and a lot of Nigerians who still don't have that first job. If you have to make money in Nigeria today, and if the government as well is to look at sectors that it can improve the rate of doing business and reforms, those are the sectors. But again, everybody needs to focus on those three words that we started with. Know your priorities. Because at the end of the day, should our priorities be those three sectors that make up half of the Nigerian economy, or those 43 sectors that make up the second half 
of the economy. At the end of the day, the government needs to be clear on what the priorities are, and businesses also need to know what your priorities are. So for are. the crystal ball, what do you think will happen, our governments will be doing in terms of these priorities? Do you see them taking the right steps to shore up the GDP? The future will tell, but as it is right now, the government has taken the first good step, and that is to ensure that there's a lot of opportunities that will be created in the agricultural sector, especially in crop production. But the future will then let us know if those steps will be quickened and if the results will affect the common man. All right, we appreciate your time. Know your priorities, you Melissa. Know your priorities. All right, your analysis and insights. Thank you for joining us. The pleasure is always mine.